Here we have four objects: a hoop, a uniform solid disc, a uniform solid sphere, and a hollow thin spherical shell. They are made of different materials, so they can all have equal radius and equal mass. Consider each object's rotational inertia about an axis that goes through its center of mass and is perpendicular to this page. Which means each rotates like this about its center. Rank their rotational inertia from high to low. The rotational inertia for a point mass is I equals to m r squared. But these objects are not point mass, so we cannot use this equation directly to find their rotational inertia. However, we can use this idea to help us analyze things qualitatively. For the same outer radius and the same total mass, the farther away from the axis the mass distribution, the larger the rotational inertia. Since the hoop has all its mass far away from the axis, the hoop has the largest rotational inertia. The solid sphere has the smallest rotational inertia. If we turn the picture this way to compare the solid disk to the solid sphere, we can see that the solid disk has the same thickness throughout, while the solid sphere is thicker in the center. Which means it has a larger fraction of mass close to the axis. If we compare these two, we can see that the spherical shell does not have mass in here to be close to the axis. So compared to these two, the solid sphere has bigger fraction mass close to the axis. So it has the smallest rotational inertia. Then let's compare the solid disk to the spherical shell again. The disc has the same thickness throughout, but for the shell, only the top and the bottom of the circular part is close to the axis. Farther out, there is more mass, and there is even more mass farther from the axis. So compared to the solid disc, the spherical shell has a bigger fraction of its mass far from the axis. So the spherical shell is the second, then the solid disk, then the solid sphere. Notice that when looking for rotational inertia, the location of the mass matters. Therefore, we cannot use the center of mass to represent an object. For example, if we treat this sphere as all its mass concentrated at at its center of mass, we would have a point mass right here on the rotational axis, which means. R would be zero, and the rotational inertia would be zero, and of course that is not correct.